This morning I'll be cautious of the time we have had today. A great uh, gospel presentation from Brother Ken. Thank you again. Uh, can we thank Brother Ken again for being with us? Thank you so much for that. The Gideons talking about sharing the Word of God. We also had a great uh, video presenting our discipleship groups for the next quarter. And I want to encourage you, get plugged in with at least one of those and be involved. Uh, discipleship is so important. And here's why all that matters, and this is what I'm preaching about today. Here's why all that matters. Why, preacher, would we go to the trouble of handing out the Word of God to people? Why, preacher, would I take an extra hour of my week to join a discipleship group and, and study the Word of God? Well, friend, the Word of God has power in our lives. We're going to talk about that for just a few minutes this morning. In Isaiah chapter 55, we're going to look at verses 10 and verse 11. Here in this passage, we find that the southern kingdom of Israel, known as Judah, had been taken into Babylonian captivity. And this prophet named Isaiah was speaking in advance to that generation that would be in captivity. They were not yet in captivity, yet he was already speaking to them as though they were, knowing where they would go. And he told them that God would restore them, and in case they struggled to believe that God would restore them after such great exile and great trouble, he brings us these words in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 10. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there without watering the earth, making it produce and sprout, providing seed to the sower and bread, to the eater. So will my word be which goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me empty or void without accomplishing what I desire and without it succeeding in the purpose for which I sent it. Can we thank the Lord for his word this morning? Just as rain will cause the ground to sprout, so the word of the Lord will not return void. I want to talk to you for just a few minutes this morning on this idea. Count on the sprout. Count on the sprout. Let's pray together. Father, I come before you in the name of Jesus, and I thank you today, Lord, for your word. I thank you, Lord, for what your word is powerful and able to accomplish. And today, oh God, and a busy holiday weekend as rain and storms come, I pray, Lord, for these next few minutes, could we just focus on nothing but your word? Captivate our hearts, O oh God. Stir, O oh God, our hearts. But Lord, captivate our attention that our hearts would long for nothing but you. Speak to us, O oh God, by your word today, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. He said it, but could God do it? These people, God's people, had been taken into Babylonian captivity, ripped out of their homeland, Judah, the southern portion of Israel, living in captivity all this time, and yet they see this prophecy from this prophet from years gone by named Isaiah. Isaiah said there's going to be a time when God is going to call the people back to the homeland. There's going to be a time when God restores you. There's going to be a time when God think, makes things right. There's going to be a time when revival sweeps the heart of the people and they turn from their wicked ways and turn back to God and things will be how they should be. And after living in captivity, after living in that difficult period, you could imagine the question they were asking, how could that be? Yes, God said that, but can God really do it? And here in verses 10 and 11, Isaiah draws upon an analogy, a picture, and he says he, he draws upon something they know so well, rain falling from the sky to water the crops. And he describes this and he says this is a picture of how God's Word works in our lives. I want to look at that picture for a few minutes this morning that Isaiah gives us of rain falling as a picture of God's Word. First, I want you to notice where the source of that rain. For Isaiah says, the rain that falls, it falls from heaven. The snow that falls, it falls from the heavens. See, that's the funny thing about rain and snow. We cannot manufacture it, we cannot make it, and we sure enough cannot control it. Now, I've read and seen where some people have tried various wise tales to make it rain. It doesn't work. We've all seen a desperate sixth grader do a snow dance in hope of getting out of school the next day. It does not work. 
We have no control over the rain or the snow. Job chapter 38, God was talking to him there in verse 22. He says, have you ever been to the storehouse of snow? Later on in verse 28, he asked the question about where does the rain come from? God's making a point to Job. He's making a point to us that the rain and the snow, we don't make it. We can't control it. It simply comes when it comes. And now in verse 11, God is telling us that the Word of God is just like that, that just as the rain falls from heaven, so the Word of God comes from the mouth of Almighty God. We cannot control it. We cannot manufacture it. We cannot make it. We can only receive it when God speaks to us and we allow that to come from heaven down to us. Now, how does God speak to us? 2 Timothy 3.16, it says that all Scripture is inspired. All Scripture, the word there literally says, is God breathed out of the mouth of God, from the breath of God. God spoke upon holy people of old. They wrote down the word of God that we now have for us in the Bible. And now, even today, God continues to speak to us. God continues to guide us. And God continues to minister to us through His word. Friend, hear me. Why is the Bible more important than any other book you own? Because it is the Word of Almighty God. Those words do not come from Hollywood. Those words do not come from CNN or Fox. Those words do not come from the courthouse. Those words do not come from the White House. Those words do not come from Facebook. Those words do not come from Twitter. Those words come from heaven above, from the very mouth of God. God speaks to us. So any verse you can find in that Bible, any promise you can find in that Bible, that is from the mouth of God straight to the heart of men and women today. Thanks be to God for that word that comes down to us. That's why it's so important that we emphasize the word of God because notice what the word does now. It doesn't just come from heaven, but it stays on the earth. It does not return, Isaiah says, until it's done what it has accomplished. Right. My point is this. Rain does not fall out of the cloud, and then the clouds say, oh, wait a second, come back up here. I didn't mean for that to happen. <laughs> There's no retraction of rain. It falls, it does what it does. Isaiah says that's exactly how the word of the Lord works. God does not let his word come out of heaven and then retract it and take it back. God does not say that he can save you from your sin and then find out how messed up you are and say, whoop, I take it back. God does not say he can bless you financially and make a way for you and then look at your checkbook and say, my goodness, what did you do? The word is not retracted. The rain does not come back. He says it goes and it stays until it does what it does. I've got good gospel news for you today. God is not looking for a way out of his word. God is not looking for a way to retract it. God does not want to take it back. He says, I have said what I said and I will do what I said. My word comes from heaven and it shall not return until it does what it's supposed to do. What does the Word of God do? The middle part of verse 10, it says that rain waters the earth so it produces and sprouts. See, the ground, the dry, dusty dirt, cannot produce anything on its own. You can put seed in the ground, and at that point, that seed has the potential to turn into something, but on its own, that dry, dusty dirt cannot make that seed turn into a plant. It doesn't work that way. In fact, if left to its own devices, the dry, dusty dirt will choke out that seed and kill it before it can produce anything. And yet, Isaiah says water comes down from the sky. And when the water hits that dirt, all of a sudden things begin to change. That dry, dusty dirt becomes a moist mud. The ground becomes wet. The seed is germinated. All of a sudden a sprout begins to shoot up through the dirt. And life comes where death has been. You see, that's the power of water on dirt. And what Isaiah says to us today is this, You are dry, dirty ground. 
you can't grow anything. You may have some good seed in you that could yield great potential in your life, but on your own and by your own devices, you, dirty ground, will choke out every bit of potential you've got and kill everything. If you've ever seen me try to take care of a plant, you know that's true. <laughs> oh, but thanks be to God. When the water of the Word comes down on dry hearts like mine and yours, all of a sudden things begin to change. All of a sudden life begins to burst forth. All of a sudden the seed can begin to grow. Our potential can suddenly be reached. Things begin to be produced in us that we could never produce in ourselves. And if God had left us alone, we'd have choked it out and killed it. But when the Word of God gets down in our heart, suddenly things begin to grow in us. Thanks be to God. Say, preacher, what does the water of the Word produce? Well, it produces all sorts of things. It produces faith. Romans 10 and 17, it says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of Christ. It produces healing in our lives. Psalm 107, verse 20, it says that He sent forth His Word and healed them. It produces joy in our hearts. Psalm 19 and 8, it tells us that the, the uh, commandments of God are right and it makes our hearts glad. It produces in us the ability to overcome temptation. Psalm 119 and 11, it tells us, I hid my word in your heart that I might not sin against you. Amen. It produces the victory over the devil. 1 John chapter 2, it goes on to tell us that you have the Word of God living in you and you have overcome the evil one. It produces holiness in us. John 17 and 17, it lets us know, it says, make us holy by your Word. Again and again, the Bible goes on and on, listing all the things that can be produced in our life by the water of the Word. But hear me, by yourself, none of those things will ever happen. On your own dirty ground, you'll never be holy. On your own dirty ground, you'll never be happy. On your own dirty ground, you'll never have victory over the devil. But if you'll open up your heart to the water of His Word today, things can change in you and things will begin to grow in you and you will see the fullness of Christ Jesus happening in your life. And that's why it's so important that we look to the Word of God. And that's why I'm so bothered by churches that focus on everything but the Word of God when they come together. Amen. Come on. Come on. We, we got churches today that will look to all sorts of things except the Word of God to try to help them. Right. It's not uncommon nowadays for churches to preach movies. They'll preach about the Wizard of Oz. They'll preach about the latest Marvel movie. They'll preach about Star Wars. They'll throw a Bible verse in there somewhere, but for the most part, they want to preach about Luke Skywalker, not about Jesus. <laughs> Nowadays, it's not uncommon for preachers to talk about self-help. They'll give you 10 steps to being a better you. They'll give you 15 steps to a better marriage. Now, one of them will be out of the Bible. The other 14 will be from some psychologist somewhere. And what happens is, we look to Hollywood, we look to psychiatry, we look to all these other things to try to help us, forgetting, friend, that on our own and by ourselves, we are dry and dusty ground. Hear me today, Star Wars will not fix your marriage. Marvel will not be able to put your family back together. You, you will not get free from drugs because some psychologist said so, but I tell you the word of the living God can get down in you and change you. It can produce a transformation in your heart and you can be different because of the word of the Lord. Preacher, are you against Star Wars? No, I'm not. Are you against going to see people that can counsel? Not at all. But what I'm telling you is this at the end of the day, if the word of God is not at the center of it all, it will not help you. Our life only comes by the word of God. 
But His Word, friend, can make things grow in you. His Word, friend, can set you free. His Word can fix your marriage. His Word can put hope in your heart again. His Word can give renewal to your soul. His Word can change everything. Look to His Word. And when His Word comes from heaven, let that Word in your heart and things will begin to grow. He doesn't just say it will produce things. That would be good enough. But he specifies, and they will sprout. I love that picture, sprouting forth. One reason I love it is because I've learned something about sprouts. Last few months, as you know, we expanded our parking lot, messed up a lot of stuff in order to get that done. And so they came in and they planted a bunch of seed on the dirt. Now, if you know me at all, you know I am not very patient. The Lord's still working on me. As soon as they put all that seed down, that very next morning, I went out there and I looked at it. <laughs> On day two, I looked at it. <laughs> On day three, I looked at it. <laughs> On day four, I'm not even making this up, I got down on my hands and knees in the parking lot and I stared down in the hole to see if it was there. On day five, I got so discouraged, I called Bobby Thompson, didn't I, Bobby? And I said, do you think this is working? <laughs> Seed's there. Water's there. And it ain't working. But right as I was about to give up, right as I was about to go another direction, I pulled up one morning without even thinking about it, and I looked over and I saw little green sprigs of grass beginning to pop up out of that ground. Isaiah says that's a picture of how God's Word works in your life. Some of you, you have read your Bible, you have heard sermons preached, you've gotten the Word of God, that water on your heart, and yet, yet now you look around your life and you don't see anything sprouting. Maybe you're like me, you're getting down your hands and knees looking at it saying, why ain't it working? God said, if I'd give and trust Him, He'd bless me, but I'm looking at my bank account, I'm not seeing any sprouts. God said, if I'd follow him, he could give me joy and peace. And I look at my mental health and I'm not seeing any sprouts. Some of you today are looking around your life and nothing's growing, nothing's happening. And like the people living in exile, you're saying, I know God said it, but is God really going to do it? I don't see anything. But, oh, but I've come with the good word of the Lord from Isaiah. He said, listen, if that word comes and comes from heaven, it will not return void, but you can count on the sprouts. That what God has said, God will do. He might not do it when you want. He might not do it how you want. But at some point, you'll look down and you'll see the word of God sprouting forth life in you. Oh, I don't care how dry the ground has been. You can count on the sprout. I don't care how messed up your life is. You can count on the sprout. I don't care how many bad decisions you made before you came to God. You can count on the sprout. I don't care how discouraged you may be. You can count on the sprout. I don't care what you saw on Facebook. You can count on the sprout. I don't care what you saw on the news. You can count on the sprout. Because God said, my word will not return to me void or empty. It will sprout forth and there will be life. Hallelujah. You say, preacher, you seem to be feeling this today. I'll tell you why. Because this preacher's looking at the ground and I'm counting on the sprout today. I'm believing God to be who God said He'd be. That if God said He would work in our lives, that He would do it for the ministry center. You can count on the sprout of life in the midst of a dead, dry field if the water of the word is on it. And then notice what happens. In the final part of verse 10, it produces, catch it now, bread for the eater and seed for the sower. Come on. Bread is what you need to survive right now. Bread is what sustains you in the present moment. And Isaiah says, if you will put your hope in God and let the water of the Word fall on your heart, it will sprout forth and He will sustain you in the present moment. But it's not just the present moment. He said there will be seed for the sower. Right. The sower, catch it, 
is for the next harvest and the next harvest and the next harvest. So it's not just sustaining you for the present moment. It's sustaining you for the moments to come. He's saying, Israel, I don't care what you face. I don't care what you go through. Harvest after harvest, day after day, God will be faithful. Let God rain down His Word and watch life sprout again and again. So here's what I'm going to encourage you to do today. Count on the sprout. Trust God to do what God has said. Believe that His Word is enough and that it can produce life in dry places. Let's count on the sprout today. Would you stand with me?